there. Right there. <laughs> <clears throat> all right what up everybody uh if you guys haven't watched yet part one is up that one is going to be at the top right if you check out the link or in the description now the reason i'm doing this two-part series i've never done it before with my videos is there's a lot of footage alex recorded about four hours worth of footage on this job that he was on site for uh since he likes to just leave the action camera on running the whole time a lot of that was just setting up you know getting the game plan walking the site um re-rigging getting the equipment putting the trucks away so i tried to condense it down so you know it wasn't one long big boring video and this way people from from watching the whole thing and then still even at cutting stuff out i ended up with close to three hours of footage so it just made sense to split it in two you know 90 minutes to close to another 90 minutes and the reason i kept it long is i wanted to show you guys this is one of the i know what i always say this is one of our hardest craziest jobs it doesn't look like it but this would probably be one of our most dangerous, biggest jobs we've done uh, for a few obvious reasons. One is you need outriggers on, on these jobs. When we do rollovers, the first thing you do is you set up the outriggers. Those are the legs that extend out from the truck and they keep you stabilized. You plant those down and all the pressure goes on those when you're lifting off the side. Two, um, if you're fans of the channel, I mentioned this a lot or just you know kind of know already, is your weakest corner on these Miller rotators is off the back corners. Off the back and off the side, you're at your strongest. Uh, off your side is when you're in between your two outriggers and off the back, you know, obviously it's off the back. You got the whole weight of the front truck and the outriggers for stabilization. But off the back corner, that's where we're the weakest. So not only did Alex have to work off the back corner here and lift heavy weight, you know, over 10,000 pound rocks, but he did it short jacked. Now what short jacked means is your outriggers aren't all the way out. You put them halfway in or however many you need. And you do that sometimes when space is very limited. Um, you're lifting something on a trailer, but you got to do it so they can drive away afterwards. In this case, he was virtually short jacked as much as you could possibly be. The outriggers weren't even extended out on the rear. And that's incredibly dangerous. That's not something I would recommend. In fact, I don't even think we would do a job like this again just because it was, it was so dangerous. But the thing about us is we know our trucks... We do so many of these jobs. We're always pushing our truck, so we become intertwined with the truck, if that makes sense. You know, we threw Alex in Big Flipper, and he uses it every single day from winch house to lifts. He assists me in rollovers, and I've been throwing a ton at him, and he's, you know, been getting better and learning. So he knows that truck in and out. You know what the truck can lift. You know what your truck can do. We know what we're rated at, and Flipper weighs every bit of 73,000 pounds or so, give or take a few hundred with the accessories. So... Alex had a good feeling for this when he scoped it out a few weeks beforehand and figured, you know, yeah, I can do the job. It's going to be crazy hard, but I'm positive I can do it. And I mean, he did it. But again, this isn't something I would replicate, nor would I want anyone to replicate. That's that's always a cardinal sin is working without outriggers. But to Big Flipper's credit, you know, my dad specced it right. It's a 75 ton rotator and it didn't even really budge. So even when he was picking up the heaviest rock, about 15,000 pounds, didn't really do much to the truck. And another thing is once you're lifting up, that's gonna be the heaviest part, the, the part that would lean you the most is once you're breaking that friction. Once it breaks, it's yours. So if the truck was in any real danger, it would have it would have leaned at that part before it came up. Once that happens, it's ours, it's safe, and you know we could put everything into position. Now, one other thing I never talk about in any of my videos is the price. This one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys, just to show you the nightmare of a job it was. I quoted $20,000 for this job based on the description given to me over the phone and the pictures. First of all, Ventura, where this is at, is about 75 miles or so away. So it's not really local. Two is we had an incredibly small window to do this. They picked this specific date at this specific time. Um for two reasons one is a tide that's when the tide would be the lowest and this time was after 8 a.m because of the neighbors this is an incredibly upscale area i'm going to throw in a zillow screenshot right here you can see how much these houses are going for these are usually summer homes vacation homes or just people that bought this stuff 30 40 50 years ago and they stay in the family millions of dollars so you didn't want you know these loud truck sounds of grumbling to be waking everyone up at six in the morning seven in the morning so we had a very short window to do this job. And three, the reason I quoted that high was 
the space. You know, the truck was inches away from hitting everything. And right about now, um, I'm gonna overlay the dash cam footage from the truck. This is gonna be cool because you guys can see how much of a nightmare was backing up Big Flipper into this one spot, the only spot to do this job. This is another good reason why these rotators I use so much. A lot of people in the comments always say, why don't you just get a crane to do that? People don't understand it's not that simple. Cranes, at least a crane, the size of a crane needed to do a job like this, they're huge. They got tons of axles. They, they got trailers that follow them to do all the setup. Um, and you'll see in this video, it wouldn't have been possible to fit a crane in here. Now, even if, if you were, it wouldn't be able to back into, as you'll see, in between the two houses in that small little alley to the actual porch. You'd have to do it from the street, but cranes cannot be short jacked. You'd have to extend the outriggers out fully because the boom's gonna be all the way over the house. You couldn't do that here because the residents would be trapped in. You'll see in the Zillow screenshot I threw early, um, up earlier, it dead ends. So there's only one way in, one way out. That crane would be blocking dozens of people and that's a huge no-go. On top of that, with the rotator, you just start your truck and you're out. You just drive to your destination at normal freeway speed. Cranes, the size needed for jobs like this, usually require permits to travel. You get that ahead of time. Your, your day trip permits and everything, your routes, route people, they're a process. So that's why they hired us. In fact, we got this job from a crane company, Champion Crane. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for the job, by the way. Um, they recommended us because they're familiar with their work. So it worked out. You know, they picked the right company and the right tool for the job. But for all of those reasons above, that's why I quoted that price. Now, the customers didn't, you know, we went back and forth. They thought it was too high, which it is. But on a job like this, you don't charge for the hours on time for your on scene. I charge for the, the risk factor and just the severity of the, of the job, how difficult it was. All of those combined, you know, we settled at around 15000 I think, um, a little bit less. But that's what you get into when you get into these crazy unknown jobs that you don't you can't train for you just really won't replicate again you know it's it's got to be mutually beneficial for both parties as for that part i know you guys are wondering what, what was the point of this whole video you're just moving rocks that is not my call to make the customer wanted it so we did it i guess over time uh the waves would crash against those rocks and knock them over and move them to the neighbor side so that's what the homeowner hired us for is to move the rocks back into position the way they wanted them so they can i guess fill them with concrete whatever you do with those rocks to keep them sturdy now i guess it also adds as protection when the waves hit they don't go onto the porch so you know we get these jobs we do the jobs we're not one to back down from from any job as you can see in my my channel so i hope you guys like this video uh, by now, all of the dash cam footage should have played. I, I mainly did this just so I could overlay it with the dash cam footage since there's no audio of backing up. So you guys just can see all angles. You know, the drone at the end of this video, uh, Alex up close and personal, and then the dash cam just so you guys can see how incredibly tight, how incredibly hard this job was. It's not just as easy as backing into an open area and lifting rocks. You see with the chains, they kept slipping out too. That was a huge thing. Is just they don't have lift points. They're not containers where you just sick a sling through it you know their chains want to follow the path of least resistance so that's why they kept riding up we had to use binders so you'll see you know how alex finished the rest of this one and i just really hope this this video gets a lot of love just because of how difficult it was so enjoy the rest of the video i'll shut up for now and don't forget to subscribe and like if you guys enjoy peace Which one? This this one in the middle? That one goes right here?
Aquí por abajo. Uno y uno. What happened? What are you? you try to lift it and then see if you can put it okay. on that foot. Know that? Can I say? Tomás Slack, espérate, deténla. Ya. Yeah. Ahí está. Huh? Yeah, let's let's uh, fix the other one.
Yeah. Around this? Around the side of that one there. This one you mean? You want to lower it? Yeah. Oh. More, 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 more. To meet in the middle here. Hook it up like right here in the middle. That's fine. When I pull up on it, it's going to okay. release the slack. Where do you want that one? Let's play. That's okay. That tight cord is around here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can go there. Tell me where 
Right here, over there. Oh, careful. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Um. A little more to your left. I mean, sorry, to your right. To the right. Well, if we lean against that one, it kind of comes back. Watch, watch it go out a little further, and then we'll lean it back. Set it on that other rock there, and kind of lean it back like that. Touch up there. All right, run down and touch it. Now lean it back. That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> Got chains off. All right. All right. Let's get that boy. We're going to skip it right in here. This little guy might take one of these and bump this thing. Yeah, I'll probably get this little one and bah, hit it. We might we might take that small one there and put it over here on the side, maybe. Well, let's work let's work let's work on that one first. Mark that one right in there. Lo mismo lo cruzamos. Here, let me, let me get this one down. We need it all the way over there. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So this one we cross all the way. All the way down. And so the center, sorry, the center top. It's not right here. Yeah. Let it go. That's fine. Okay. That's fine right there. Sí. A ver si quítalo de aquí. Lo mismo. Let's do the same thing we did with the other one. We'll put it across. That's the side that's open the most, right? Yeah. We'll put it there and then I'll start yeah. turning that way. That's this one, right? Yeah. Here, let me unhook this one. Maybe put the chain, no? So we'll pull down the one. What happened? Wrap it. Wrap what? I'm going to be pulling, so I'll do this.
problem is that it unravels. So we probably have we probably have to chain bind it again. This one goes on this side, that's fine. Oh you're gonna cross it again? Yeah. It'll pull up on it, see? You, you're saying do this? That's just gonna pull up on it. The moment I put any tension, it's not gonna do anything. You sure? All right, we'll do that. We'll pull one of the chains there. Good idea. You want that in that hole? You want me to put a chain around that and start pulling and see if it wedges in there? What? You want me to put a chain around this way and pull? See if it wedges?
want to let him have it or let him pull it out? Let him have it. Let him have it. I'm going to let it loose. Okay, there you go. Trying to put him in around there and then see if we can pull it up a little bit. Wrap it around. Pull it towards you. Pull it. It won't work. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let loose of that. This one. For this one, we need a lower angle, huh? Here. Esa, try my Esa. Esa. No, Esa, el blanco. I need a low angle. Para abajo, ajá, ahí está. Tráigaselo. El botón está atrás. The button in the rear, press it and then lift up on the hook. To the other side. So the same way that you're doing it, but you're pressing on the wrong hook. It's a positive latch, so it goes up, it bends up. There you go. There you go. Ready? What do you think right there?
Let me try to hook it up there and lift it up, see if I can winch it in. Let me that other chain. Well, if it wedges in there in that little crevice, it'll stay there. Probably lift this one up and set it over there for a minute. Take that little one out and set this one down below. You want to take the bottom one at the bottom out? Yeah. It's just too small. It's not going to support this one. Okay. I wish. That's just. And then if we had it tucked in there and it was kind of like on cantilever, but then when you tried to pull it up. That's why I'm saying like if I connect that chain here and pry up on this while I'm winching in, it won't wedge in there? I, I, I don't know. Let me try it and if not, we'll, we'll do your idea. Let me this. There. Yeah. I might want. I might want to. Uh, I just try it. See if it'll come back into that. Hey, we still have to lift it, right? Right. Might have to lift it a little bit, just a little, a little bit. You gotta get it up a little. Yeah. You can't lift, lift and pull from the same one. You wanna try to go around this way on the back side to see if it'll lift up. If the front side's not working for you. All right, help me get around the back side. I'll just swing that way a little bit. It's caught on this speed. What do you got a car? Wiggle it up and down a little bit. Then you ride it up a little bit to see if it loosens it up and goes back and back.
a little more. Alright, now swing it back this way and see if the point goes up. Swing it this way. Alright, let, let the, let this, there you go. Now pick it up again and see if we can move it back. Put a rock in between there just in case. Hay una piedrita? It's on the other chain too? Yeah. That's fine. So we lift it off then? I could chain it up right here. We'll just sus suspend one side. I'll put pressure on this and then I'll let go of that. Yeah. Okay. All right, Frank. Quítese de ahí. Ahí de where it's going to come off. Bring me the binder, yeah. One, one of the binders. Let me let me put this one first. Just hold that. Just hold that in, okay? No, let up. Give me this, but hold the other one. Okay, now do it. Okay.
Yeah. They're on the opposite side. Ahí en la de enfrente, ahí hay. We're picking this one up. There's a big one in there. Well, bring all those small ones. That's fine. You got it. That's fine. Those are ten footers. Todas, si quieres, tráetelas. Okay. Oh, this one's the end, right? So I need this then. Yeah. At the bottom. Can you fit it under? Yeah. Watch it. I'll take this piece off. What piece? It's, it's supposed to be connected, no? Or he has another. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that's why. So it goes here. Oh. Just pass me this end. Bump it there, maybe set it there temporarily, and then move that other one back. Watch out, I'm gonna swing over you. I don't wanna swing out too much.
No, I wanted to. No. Okay. Like that or? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Clear. Like, chains Chains are clear?
What are you gonna fill it in with some mat? Why is it the last one always has to be a pain in the butt? Yeah. You know, we got all the other ones up there just fine. All right. Hold on, let me pull this. Get He's trying to get the hook yeah. through? Yeah, he's trying to get it. He's almost died. Hold on a second. That rock, you can't pull it that way? The rock. Huh? Got it, right there, okay? Got it. your hands. Right there? You want to hire or? Um, see if you can pick it up, I'll put it down in here a little bit. Spin it around, maybe. Go ahead and pick it up. Pick it up, let me spin it around.
Pick up. Pick up. I put a rock there. Yeah. All right. Good job. Last one, man. pizza that we can enjoy. I don't, do you want to wrap your truck up first? Yeah, I just need to take one last, last picture with the drone and I'll put everything away. It'll take me like two seconds. Uh, you need our help to wrap up? No, everything is pretty much done. Okay. You want to pizza and let's go. Will you put all this stuff on your YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, for insurance purposes, you know. Joshua sent me a couple links to a couple of your YouTube things. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of them. Yeah, we have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Got a YouTube channel that he puts all this stuff on. Well, we're pretty much, uh, pretty much done here, guys. So there was a whole bunch of rocks over here, all the way down here, and we pretty much clustered them all up. The highest uh, one that we encountered was around roughly about 15,000 pounds. Very heavy, especially uh, being short jack like that. But customers happy. Got wet a little bit, but. Pretty much all done here from uh, Ventura. We're just gonna finish uh, putting Big Flipper away. I'm gonna go a little bit more pan out. There, guys. Awesome. All right, guys. Peace out.